Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to video number two. Well, actually, it'll be my first where we're going to actually build something. And here's where we're going to start with this cob. We are going to drill out all the way through here. Insert a hardwood plug. Um, drill the draft hole and then drill the chamber. Now listed above here, what I have is I have the bits I use. This is going to be a 5 8 inch Forstner bit, uh, 7 30 seconds for the draft hole. You guys can adjust that accordingly. That might be a little big for some of you guys, or you might not want it that big. But that's a pretty close to standard Missouri Meerschaum size through here. If you guys are going to leave the stem on, you can use that as a guide to center your hole. And uh, 11 16 chamber bit. Uh, made from a uh, spade bit, obviously, or speed bit. Um, and a 5 8 inch dowel. Hardwood dowel. So basically, uh, I will say with the chamber bit, this is going to probably be one of the specialty tools you will need to get or make. Um, judging from experience, I would say just go buy them from uh, Vermont Freehand. And while you're there, let's go ahead and pick up some leather dye. Because if you're going to pay the shipping, you might as well buy more than one thing. Um, I believe this was, I want to say it was around 16 bucks. So yeah, you could make it cheaper, but like I said, by the time you get all your time into it and figure out how to make it, you're better off just purchasing one from the get-go if you decide to go this route. If you decide not to modify the chamber, you probably can completely skip this video. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to pause it now. Um, oh, we're also going to remove the stem. I don't know if I mentioned that. But what I'm going to do is... Probably take this down to the drill press. That's another tool you're going to need for this build along is a drill press. You can probably do it with a hand drill, but it's going to be a little tough. And uh, there's a couple parts that might get a little sketchy as far as uh, doing it along with the build along. Basically, I'm going to take this to the drill press and drill this hole all the way through with this uh, 5 8 inch force. All right, guys, we're back. Here's the cob now with the hole through it all the way through and that's where we're going to put our plug. Um, you'll notice too that I left the shank on and just drilled that right out. You know at this time if you wanted to you could almost just call that good. You ain't going to have to do a lot of, if you're going to leave the stem on. You won't really have to do a whole lot with uh, drilling a draft hole. Just clean it up a little bit after you plug it and drill the chamber. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the shank and uh, insert the dowel just into the bottom of the hole. We and which one thing to mention is you'll notice this is going to be really, it's not going to be tight on the way up or on the top of the cob, but as you go down, it is going to get tight because a lot of these cobs do have a kind of a get skinnier to the, towards the bottom. So. I'm just going to pause it here, and uh, I'll bring it back in a little bit here. Alright guys, we're back, and this is what you kind of got. Cob on a stick. <laughs> Alright, so I inserted the 5 8 inch dowel. Um, I usually put it so I go about, uh, I like to go just a bit above the top of the original hole. We took out the stem. The reason I did not take out the stem right away is actually... After you cut that out with the Forstner bit, they're a lot easier to wiggle out. And they come out a lot easier, and you get a lot less breakout around here. So that's where that is. And then what I'll do is I'll just let the glue dry um, for a while. It's a pretty tight friction fit, uh, fit almost by itself. And then I'll come through with a coping saw and cut this off flush. All right, guys, I got my dowel cut off. Don't be worried if you don't get 100% flush. Just use a little file and kind of square that up so it's uh, flat. And the reason we're going to need it to be flat is because when we go to drill our chamber out, we need this to sit flat on the drill press so we don't get a hole going one way or the other. So now it's time to mark our draft hole where we're going to drill that. I usually like to go about middle, and this is where you're going to want to use an awl or something. I'm just going to use this file. And the reason for we're going to mark it because when we go to drill it, we don't want our drill bit to walk left or right up and down on us. So we'll mark it about middle. I just kind of eyeball it. 
There we go. Kind of wiggle it around a little bit. And this part I do use a hand drill because you don't really have to drill a whole lot into it. It's just a little bit, and I mean a little bit. So that way it gives a spot for this uh, drill bit to follow and it won't walk all over the place. So I'm going to drill that and then we'll address drilling the chamber. All right, we're back. There's my little hole. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a whole lot. Now, if you're still with me, this is uh, one tip I'll give you is we're going to chuck this Forstner bit back in and we're going to go down and we're just going to touch this dowel a little bit. Reason for that is that will leave us with a uh, centering mark on this dowel in the middle. And so then when we put our chamber bit in, it's going to go right to that. It'll follow that centering bit just kind of how we did here. So this doesn't, if we go down now, it might tend to walk left or right because this isn't exactly tight right here, but it will be towards the bottom. But that way we know where it's going to follow that hole. If you don't do that, it might dance a little bit and you're going to give yourself a real headache. So basically we're going to put this in, go down, go boop, touch it a little bit. So that little point in the middle leaves me a point in the middle. Then we'll put this in. And what we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of eyeball it down to that. And I'll put a little tape on it where I want to stop. And when I'm drilling it, I'm going to stop just before that tape. I'll check it. Go, if it's good, I'll leave it. If it needs more, I'll go and hit it a little bit more. But once you get close to this draft hole, take your time for sure. Because it'll be really easy to go too far. So like I said, kind of eyeball it. Maybe mark it with some tape. And then stop before the tape. Make sure you, you didn't go too far already. And then just kind of ease your way into it, checking it in little increments. So I'll bring you back when I get that all done. Alright guys, we're back. All went well. I gotta clean up that hole a little bit. Um, kind of hard to see on camera. It's always hard to show this, but it's coming right in here, right near the bottom of the bowl. I'll probably take this file, clean up this little draft hole a little better. You can see the hardwood plugs in there. It's got a uh, nice uh, <laughs> beveled shape or round bottom. Sorry, the word escapes me for the proper word. But it's got the round bottom. It's got the nice draft hole, which I'll clean up with a file a little bit, just like a traditional briar pipe. That's where I'm going to cut this one um, short, and we're going to stop on this project. I know this one went a little long, but there was a lot to try and explain, so hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, Badger Piper, sign off.